right, so we've got eight people coming to the party. I need enough food for eight people. Um, okay, so I will get um, four pounds of hamburger for the grill. Diane, I just found out that there's 16 people coming now. 16? 16. You're going to have to double your food. Math. It's everywhere. Thank you for joining us for this month's LLK 12 with the focus on math math madness. And math is an interesting topic. It is sometimes one of those love-hate topics with a lot of students. Um, it, sometimes it's like you're either good at it or you're not. But I'm here to kind of encourage you to think, not think of it that way. Math is, um, it exercises the brain. Even if you don't like math or you don't love it, just doing math exercises the brain. And it's going to um, help you learn better and more fluidly in the future. Hey, have you ever noticed what's odd? What's that? Every other number. Hmm. Math really is all around us. It is part of life in so many ways. So just kind of when you're thinking about working, especially with your students on math, think about the ways that you can incorporate it into everyday life. Um, counting songs when they're young, you know, can they count to 10, skip count songs, and, and then can they do them backwards? That can be a way to start the process with numbers. Board games are great for practicing early math skills, for counting, for understanding like moving forward to, backwards, you know, if you have to go back four spaces. All of that, that's like practicing what you'd do on a, a number line. You know, you would move forward to four, and if you're going to subtract two, you move back two. So a lot of the skills, if you can kind of take away the fear that some students have towards math and make it a game in a lot of ways, you're going to uh, better encourage them to embrace this subject. See that circle over there? He's really smart. He has 360 degrees. And the other thing with math is that really math is about this part of the pencil a lot of time. It's about making mistakes and learning. It's about this doesn't work, so let me try another way to do it. So the eraser is big. And, um, you know, I kind of like to focus with on students in this area that um, mistakes are opportunities to learn. When you make a mistake with math, you've learned one way not to do it. And sometimes we don't celebrate that enough with students and they start to feel penalized like every time it's like, oh, I got it wrong. Oh, I got it wrong. Instead of focusing on the parts, maybe the steps in the problem that they did correctly. And then just like now we know this way doesn't work. Do you know what mathematicians do after it snows? What? They make snow angles. Cooking is another great idea. You know, we want to double this recipe. You know, it had um, two eggs. Now how many eggs do we need with young students? Sometimes even taking a recipe and saying, okay, this is a giant recipe and we only need to fit feed half these people. So what do we do to the ingredients there? Cooking is great for math. Other ideas to incorporate math into other subjects might be the history of math, biographies of mathematical pioneers, looking at careers that use math and talking about those with your young students. And really in so many ways, math is a language. I know I've talked to ESL students sometimes who have said that in school, the one subject that they didn't struggle with was the math part, because that was something that didn't require all the words. And in a way, it is a different kind of language where we're communicating quantities and numbers and values. So you want to keep that in mind, too. <clears throat> Math is all over nature, and that's kind of cool, too. You know, if um, you can look at animals and if they have this many babies or how much feed they take or, you know, you get a puppy and based on how much it weighs, it needs this much 
food and what if it weighed twice as much. There's all sorts of ways to incorporate that into life. If you haven't looked at Fibonacci numbers, those are kind of fun, like the math patterns that we see in nature, um, just to kind of be aware of those and talk about those because there's a mystery in math too. And um, the idea of Roman numerals and how they work and how our system is based on a base 10 system, probably because we only have 10 fingers. Um, I know one thing that we talked about in our house when we were talking about place value is like, what if we were octopuses? <laughs> um, so octopuses only have eight tentacles. So we did something called octopus math. We called it base, it was really base eight math. So if you only had eight fingers, really the eight would be one group of eight and zero ones left over. And so if you can kind of translate our regular place value system into other um, uh, systems, like a base eight system for the octopus, that really kind of helps you understand it's not this random 10. It works based on logic. And logic is a big part of math. And so sometimes if your student's having trouble with the actual numbers of it, maybe back up and think about some of the other portions of math, like the logic, maybe play chess with the student. Um, again, to start thinking about logic and seeing ahead, etc. There are three kinds of people in this world. Those who can count and those who can't. Um, math tricks, like the nine tricks, you ever do that? Like nine times two, you put down your second finger and it's one, eight, 18. Nine times three is 27. I mean, there's all sorts of little fun math tricks that you can do. And then math in life, going to the grocery store, budgeting. Let's say you want to paint a room and you need to know how much paint that you need to go buy at the store. That's the measuring and looking at um, uh, like the square feet of coverage that you need. Building things is geometry and it can even be building a fl um, or putting together a flower bed, you know, looking at the measurements, how do you plant, you know, the plants in there to make it um, symmetrically pleasing, et cetera. All of that is math. Playing with dice is, you know, even if it's like I'm going to roll the dice, two dice, and we're going to multiply those two numbers. One dice says two, the other says six, and now we're going to multiply that. There's a lot of cool math games. And then cards, um, whether it's Uno when they're really young or more sophisticated card games when they get a little bit older. That's another way where to get familiar with numbers and to start kind of getting used to ways to manipulate numbers. And you can always Google and look at, um, you know, ways to to uh, increase math proficiency by using card games. And you can get a list of cards online. We also have a lot of online um, uh, opportunities to enhance your students' math skills um, here at the Blount County Library. And uh, let's go ahead and move over and talk about some of those. We're going to move over to the Blount County Library website and I'm going to quickly show you a few different resources um, that might be useful to you, especially if your student needs a little bit more motivation relative uh, to math. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go up to the learning tab and then I'm going to go over to Universal Class Courses. And this is just a great benefit that we have here at the Blount County Public Library. Let me click on view catalog and then I'm just going to do I want to learn math. We're just going to be very, very specific there. And there are quite a few of universal classes on math from Algebra 101, Pre-Algebra, Basic Math, Geometry, Introduction to Logic, Statistics, and then there's more, even like accounting, because that is certainly a type of math that a lot of students will uh choose to learn also while they're in especially high school. So I just want to encourage you to take advantage of some of these free courses that are available here. With each one, you're going to get a description, an overview, a list of what's covered in the lessons, 
You'll hear um, some people's comments at the end relative to the lessons. And then usually they at the end are going to recommend some other courses that you might want to consider along these lines, geometry, basic math, statistics, etc. So just want to mention if especially, you know, for homeschooling folks who are looking for curriculum, this is a place to get a lot of that where you can actually um, homeschool your kids for free using these resources at the library. So again, I'm going to go to learning and then I'm going to go down to TN Electronic Library and um, just all sorts of cool stuff here. I'm going to start with looking at students of different ages. I'm going to go to the elementary level and then I've, I've highlighted this resource before, but PebbleGo is just such a cool resource uh, for younger students. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on PebbleGo, use this resource, and then once it comes up, we are going to just do a quick search up here of Pebble Go on math. Okay, click on math, and you're going to see addition, counting, multiplication, place value, skip counting, subtraction. And if you go all the way down here to the very bottom, your student can even play games that have to do with math. Um, you know, Zooms, quick math, multi-match, etc. So another fun way to make math fun and just something that they can practice at home. Next in our Tennessee Electronic Library, I'm going to go back to students. I'm going to go to middle school. And then this time I'm going to look at a, a, a source that we haven't used a whole lot in previous LLK12, and that is World Book Discover. So let me go ahead to go over here to World Book Discover. All right. So if you can see up here at the top, we have an opportunity to pick a subject. So we will pick math. And you can read a lot about different math, different folks in the math field, etc. And we are also going to then search games. And if we scroll down, there is a whole slew of math games that you can use. And you can click on the see more, whether it's looking at perimeters, multiplications, um, adding fractions, all of that. And again, this is just, especially when a, a student is a little tired of having things presented the same old way, this is a good way for them to practice um, uh, their, their math. We're going to move on back. Also, we're going to look at students, and I'm going to look at high school students. Okay, so Peterson is under the test and career prep. We're going to go ahead and click on that. And again, this is something that was featured a little bit more prominently in um, some of the previous llk 12s videos that we've done. But I just wanted to point this out because um, on the test prep section of this, you can work on math foundational skills, even if your student is looking and maybe going into vocational areas that require certain math. And then there's just the prep for different tests that a student may need to take. So high school prep, um, we have advanced placement um, and we've got some math courses in there as well. So just a lot of things, you, you can also, the GED math is in here, foundational math, as I mentioned, but just a lot of good practice tests that your student can take just to see how they're doing with the math. One of the things I like to say about math is that sometimes we get used to using a certain resource for math. Like let's say you have a textbook series that you've used or your child has used for many years. That textbook series has a way that they ask questions. Okay, and sometimes students who are really, really smart, but maybe not as gifted in math, they may learn to figure out the games, you know, to get to the right answer based on the way the question is asked. So I always think it's a good idea to break out of your traditional curriculum or textbook, whatever it is, and go someplace else. And do they still understand multiplying fractions if it's presented a different way? or certain word problems, do they still get it if they use a different resource that talks, uh, that kind of words the word problems a little bit different? So just some things to kind of keep in mind as you are, um, as you're looking at 
teaching your kids math and really making sure that they understand it. It's good for them to have it presented different ways and to have it presented in real life. As I mentioned earlier, I mean, there's the one thing of like, you know, how much, how, what's the square footage of uh, paint I need for this room or how much paint do I need for X amount of square footage and figuring that out. So again, the more ways that you can present math, the better and the less intimidating it is going to be for your students. The next thing I want to look at is our streaming services, and I'm, I'm not going to get in these as, as much as I have in the past because I think you're all familiar with these now, but just kind of, you can look up math books and math videos, and there's tons of stuff in here. And once again, sometimes just having it presented in different ways, you know, some children are more visual, auditory, kinesthetic, etc. The more of those that you can help your student connect to, the more they're going going to understand the math. So just a lot of good resources here. I encourage you to jump into the Blount County Library website, look around Tennessee Electronic Library, lots of good resources out there to help your students learn. All right, so all right, I've got everything doubled. I've got my grocery list ready. I think this is going to be a great party. I think we've got we're going to have everything that they we need. Okay. Yeah. I just need to go to the grocery store now. I've doubled my budget. Um, got everything ready to go. So thanks for helping. Hey. Hey. Only eight people are coming now. The rest just canceled. Half canceled? Half canceled. Half? Half. Oh. Math. Again. Thank you for joining us for this month's LLK 12. We hope that you'll join us next month when our focus is incorporating nature into education. Literally. You need to double the food. <laughs> Why was six afraid of seven? Why? Because seven, eight, nine. <laughs>